you heard a sort of dull whoomph sound. It was then that we heard all started hearing all the screams. I thought there must be loads of loads of people down there. The London Fire Brigade receives a call to respond to one of London's underground stations. The King's Cross is on fire. Four engines are dispatched to the scene and arrive within minutes. The blaze is at an escalator leading down to one of the station platforms. It's only a small fire though, nothing a hose spray can't handle. At least, that's what they think. Before responders even manage to line the hose, the flames burst toward the top of the escalator and engulf the ticket hall. Almost instantly, the entire area turns into an inferno, leaving no time to react. Instead of a small fire, the London tube is struck by the worst blaze in its history. Back in the 1980s, as it is today, King's Cross was one of London's busiest transportation hubs, a major interchange with more connections than any other of the city's stations. It housed platforms for six different underground lines, including the Victoria Line and the Piccadilly Line a few feet below. From there, escalators led up to the ticket hall. That day, Wednesday, November 18, 1987, over 100,000 passengers passed through during the evening rush hour. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary. At 1929, an hour after the rush ended, the staff was called to alert. One of the passengers noticed a small fire underneath escalator number four on the Piccadilly line. Relief station inspector Christopher Hayes and the leading railman rushed to check what was happening. As they approached the escalator, they discovered another passenger had already stopped it and warned others. They also noticed the small glimmer of light under the escalator and a thin trail of smoke coming from beneath the steps. Three British transport police constables also arrived at the scene. As they realized a fire had started, one of them rushed to the street to radio for help. At 1933, British Transport Police Headquarters passed the emergency call to the London Fire Brigade. Three minutes later, crews from the nearest three fire stations were dispatched to the station. By that time, the smoke had already reached the entrance. Transport police constables and station staff stopped the adjacent escalators and called for everyone within the ticket hall to evacuate. In the meantime, Station Inspector Hayes decided to take a closer look at what was going on beneath Escalator 4. He entered the adjacent space and confirmed what everyone suspected. The fire and smoke were spreading directly beneath the steps. Hayes hastily attempted to fight the flames with a carbon dioxide extinguisher, but failed to reach them from his position. Overlooking a nearby water fog extinguisher, he resorted to activating the machine room's circuit breaker to limit the fire spread. It was 1942 when the first firefighter crew arrived at the scene. Station officer Colin Townsley and temporary sub-officer Roger Bell went underground to assess the situation. From the ticket hall, they saw flames about halfway down the escalator, licking up the left-hand handrail. They were about four feet high. Townsley called upon firemen with breathing apparatus to come down and set up a water jet. At that moment, passengers were still getting off at the station. A Piccadilly Line train had just arrived, and more people were coming up the Victoria Line escalator toward the ticket hall. In response, the HQ controller ordered the Piccadilly and Victoria lines not to stop at the station. Despite the fire's manageable size, the situation was far from benign. As intense smoke filled the ticket hall, panic spread throughout. At 1945, the flashover happened. The fire suddenly broke out from the escalator tunnel and engulfed the ticket hall. Many passengers, firefighters, and station staff members were still inside. In less than a minute, the ceiling was burning and the fire spread into surrounding passages. The lights went out and chaos ensued. Disoriented by the sudden blaze and blackout, there was no way to escape the building. The fire raging over people's heads forced them to hit the floor and try to crawl out of the hall. However, the heat was so intense, it started burning everything and everyone in the room. At street level, the scene was disastrous. From the smoke-embowered entrances, a gruesome sound of people screaming for help was breaking through. The firefighters didn't even have time to line the hoses before the flashover occurred. They could only watch the flames consume the station and wait for someone to find out by chance. Luckily, several firefighters were still down at the ticket hall when the fire struck. 
thanks to their knowledge of such situations, they could escape and lead some passengers out. Only after the initial shock passed, the firefighters jumped into action and got the hoses ready for action. Transport police constables on the scene sent a major incident message to their HQ. Constable Hansen was also caught off guard by the blaze. When the fire broke out into the ticket hall, he threw himself on the floor and crawled toward the Victoria Line escalator. Over there, he saw a group of people coming up, unaware of the hellish scene playing out above them. Hansen took it upon himself to lead them to safety. He urged the passengers to stay as low as possible and follow him toward the exit. The group squeezed through the hall, filled with people caught by fire, screaming and rolling on the ground, and moved toward the safety of the street. Hansen suffered severe injuries, but managed to get out alive. It's unknown how many of the passengers that followed him survived. Down on the Victoria Line, one station staff member was sound enough to stop the rest of the passengers from getting on the escalators. He rushed to the tracks and waved the oncoming train to stop. Its engineer, who had been ordered not to stop, halted the train and allowed all passengers to board. Up to 200 people were saved. The three firefighters from the unit that first arrived at the scene rushed toward the burning station. As one broke through the smoke, the other two sprayed his back with water to reduce the heat. At the bottom of the stairs, they found the first victim. It was fellow firefighter Townsley, who had first entered the station to assess the blaze. He was dead, but his uniform was intact. Next to him was the badly burned body of a passenger. It is assumed that Townsley died of suffocation while he tried to rescue the other victim. Temporary sub-officer Bell, who accompanied Townsley, was still inside. Since flames had entirely consumed the ticket hall, he was believed to be dead too. However, the truth was Bell was alive and fighting the fire. As the flashover happened, he was at the bottom of the Piccadilly Line escalator, directing passengers back to the train and away from the flames. When Bell secured the platform, he returned to the escalator to find the manageable fire had since erupted into a giant blaze. He was quick to react though, grabbing a fire hose, climbing the escalator, and attacking the flames. At ground level, the reinforcements were arriving, gradually increasing the number of pumps engaged to 30. The first ambulance crew arrived on the scene at 1959. They instantly had their hands full. Dozens of people who escaped the blaze required help. Sadly, 31 people died, all of them inside the ticket hall. 100 survivors sustained injuries, 19 of these were severe burns. The tremendous strain of an army of firefighters finally controlled the blaze at 2148. Four hours later, the fire was finally extinguished. Exhausted and stressed by the heat and smoke, firefighters collapsed on the street. Their joint effort with the transport police constables and station staff members saved hundreds of lives. The King's Cross fire was the worst in the tube's history. The investigation into how the blaze started and spread so quickly would reveal many flaws in the tube system, but also lead to a whole new understanding of how fires work. British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher visited the King's Cross station the night of the disaster. Shocked by what she had seen, she ordered a full public inquiry into the accident. It aimed to answer three crucial questions. What started the fire, how it erupted into a blaze, and was there a way to prevent it? The chief investigator sought the assistance of experts who created a 3D simulation to determine how heat and smoke spread within the escalator tunnel. A one-third scale replica of the escalator and ticket hall was also built for more realistic experiments. These would reveal that a used match was the most likely item to have started the fire. Smoking had been banned in the London tube system two years before the disaster. Even so, passengers often failed to comply with the regulation. Although no one smoked on the train or the platform, many would light up cigarettes on the escalators on their way out of the station. It is presumed that on the day of the disaster, someone walking up Escalator 4 lit a cigarette and threw the match away. But it fell through a side gap and onto a heavily greased escalator drive. The match then ignited a mixture of grease, dust, and debris and set the wooden escalator on fire. The scenario was at the replica site, 
and the results were similar to firefighters' initial reports. But even with the experiments, the magnitude and spread of the fire remained a mystery. Finally, the computer simulation gave the probable answer. The model showed the spread of heat and particles along the bottom of the escalator trench where it reached the ticket hall. Surprisingly, the flames spread horizontally along the steps rather than burning vertically. The small-scale experiment confirmed the simulation was correct. After the fire was lit, it burned vertically for a minute and 11 seconds, after which it bent toward the steps and rapidly extended up the escalator trench. The escalator tunnel at the Piccadilly Line was 138 feet long and had a diameter of 23 feet. It ascended from the platform to the ticket hall at a 30-degree angle. As it turned out, the angle was perfect for creating the trench effect. The combination of the Coanda effect and the flashover principle. With the Coanda effect, fast-moving gases tend to stick to inclined surfaces. So as the heat from the fire sucked up large quantities of air from below, the flames bent and hugged the steps. As the fire rushed up the escalator trench, it heated the surfaces and entirely filled it with flammable gases. Once these gases become hot enough, they auto-ignited, creating a flashover. From there, the blaze engulfed the escalator tunnel and spread into the ticket hall. Scientists were unaware of the trench effect before the King's Cross incident and the investigation that followed it. It was probably for this reason that firefighters couldn't anticipate a relatively small fire would burst out in such a manner. Once the flashover occurred, nothing could be done except trying to flee. However, the report blamed London Underground officials for taking the risks too lightly. According to the rulebook, staff were required to deal with the fire on their own and only call the firefighters if it went beyond their control, despite the fire brigade urging immediate action and communication. Evidently, in the case of fires, each second is important. On top of everything, the underground staff was utterly unprepared for such situations, having no training in dealing with fire or the evacuation of passengers. There were accusations of negligence. Between 1956 and 1988, 400 fires were recorded on the underground escalators. Some of them were nothing less than smolderings, but a substantial number of those called for the evacuation of the station and had the potential to be disastrous. However, none of these resulted in human casualties. In the face of the criticism, senior management of the London Tube and London Regional Transport resigned from their positions. The investigation made 157 recommendations for improving safety in the London Underground. The most important were recommendations for installing heat detectors and sprinklers beneath wooden escalators and replacing them with new all-metal escalators. Additionally, improving communication with the fire brigade and creating new fire safety regulations in accordance with their instructions. These changes greatly improved underground safety and the King's Cross fire is used as a reference to this day. The tragedy provided valuable insights to firefighters about dealing with underground fires, particularly the trench effect. Their actions set a legacy of bravery for future generations. Six heroes, including the fallen station officer Townley, were commended, with Townley being posthumously bestowed the George Medal. Unfortunately, the tragedy also left a lasting mark on the victims' families, as well as those who survived. For years, both passengers and firefighters suffered from trauma caused by the terrible scenes they witnessed. They survived hell at King's Cross. Watch this episode next if you found this video interesting. Please add a like and leave a comment if you want to support the channel.